first things first, I'm, I'm fighting a, a bit of a stomach bug this morning, which means nothing to you except that I may have to sprint out of the room like a moron, and, and you shouldn't be alarmed, but you are welcome to point and laugh if, you, if you'd like. So, uh, oh, first thing, uh, quick time. All right. I have a story about quick time. Two years ago, I was visiting the University of Arizona, and I got this story about six times that had become a legend among the graduate students there. I guess, um, I guess someone had come to. There we go. Okay, someone had come by to give a talk, and during this talk, they wanted to play a video, so they left their presentation. They opened QuickTime, and this person's QuickTime was configured so that when you open QuickTime, it. Um, well, it just starts playing the last video that was open, and, and um, the audience got about eight X-rated seconds before someone got up the courage to tell them. And anyway, um, so um, all right, I've not been here before. This is this is my first time. My my name's Dan. I'm a mathematics graduate student at the University of Oregon. Uh, before that, I got a master's at the University of Akron in Northeast Ohio. Um, I can't make any promises, but I will try my best not to prove anything. Um, <laughs> uh, I've been using LaTeX for about five years now with limited success uh, since I needed to write a, a master's thesis. Um, I don't know. I'm a Leo. My favorite color is green. I, that's, I don't know what else to say about myself. But um, So why am I here? Well, um, there's a bit of an epidemic at the Univers University of Oregon, which is an epidemic of, of very poor tech. Now, this is um, an actual homework assignment um, written by an associate professor that we have, and we could spend a good 20 minutes making fun of this. Uh, you, you, can see the, you can see the margins. Uh, you can see the lack of the enumerate environment. You can see how GL is slanted. I mean, we could go for days, and th this is an associate professor. Now, this isn't really the problem. The problem is that, that first-year graduate students get to the University of Oregon. They, they, they are often just out of undergrad, meaning they may not have ever had to type mathematics in their life. And they're told, you should teach Math 111 right away. That's, um, well, that's basically sixth grade algebra is what you have to teach when you first get, get here. And so they've never had to type anything, and they're given a book and uh, some material to cover, and they're, they're told the rest is up to you. So They've got to write a syllabus, they've got to write quizzes, they've got to write exams, and, and the, the problem is that they don't have anyone as, as a resource at the University of Oregon. So you see quizzes written in Word. I, someone hand wrote their quizzes and photocopied that. Okay, so you see all sorts of crazy things, and uh, what I came up with is a, is a quick packet, but it's about 30 pages, that just sort of covers um, what you might need if you're a teacher and you're brand new to LaTeX. So you've been using LaTeX for three days, and you want to write a quiz. What might you need? That's what I came up with. And I gave a one-hour talk in January based on that packet. Um, Dick Cook heard about that talk, thought this might be a good idea to give in, in July, and, and here we are. So um, the packet looks like a packet. You go to my web page, and it's, it's right here, um, if this is of interest to anyone. Uh, and I don't know, it's 30 pages, it covers some basic things, and, and there's that. So, um, obviously, I'm not going to, to give you guys that talk here today. Uh, I mean, that talk started with, there are three lines that every LaTeX document needs. And, um, okay, so uh, I'm not going to do that, but, but what I am going to do is try to tackle some of the, the bigger problems that you might have to face. And, and we're going to try to tackle it from an applied rather than a theoretical standpoint. Okay, what I mean is... Um, once a term or so, uh, uh, a new graduate student <clears throat> finds his or her way into my office and, and comes up with a question. And that question, that question might be, Dan, I've got this PDF that I want to make for my students, and um, I have this nice high-res image that I want to put in there, and I want them to be able to explore it, and, and I can do that with the, the documents 200 megabytes. Okay, so um, I could answer that question by saying, let me tell you about my new friend Doug McKenna and how he's going to solve your problem and, and win the Nobel Prize, and I'd love to do that. Okay, that would, be, that would be fun for me, but this is a new graduate student. He's probably been awake for 36 hours, has homework due in 12 hours. Okay, so if I tried to do that, they would cry. Okay, so, so we're just going to try to give this kid the answer and so, so that he or she can, can go, go home and get some sleep. All right, so um, 
Before I continue, I'd like to say that my whole world is PDF LaTeX. Okay? I don't know anything else. This is uh, a product of, I guess, being an English-speaking mathematician. I've just <laughs> never needed anything else. So everything is PDF LaTeX. All right, so my, my talk covered some things that we're not going to talk about, some of the, the boring things. There's no real question about how to tell someone to adjust the margin. You just give them the packet, package and they do it. Okay, so there's some boring things that we had to cover. All right, um, the only interesting bullet point here, the only, I guess, non-trivial bullet point in this list is, is Beamer. And uh, I, I have a lot of really good uses for Beamer in the classroom, and I am not the person who... Had, who sits in front of their computer and reads off a slide while the students take notes. I have a lot of more innovative things than that, and, and Beamer is invaluable if you use it correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a, a series of, of problems, and then we're going to do the solutions. It's kind of like question and answer, except I'm going to do the questions and the answers. Okay, so uh, first question. Okay, I know how to use the enumerate environment, unlike uh, my associate professor here. What I want to do, though, is I want to leave the enumerate environment and have it pick up where it left off the next time. Okay. Why might I want to do that? The answer is different sections of something have different instructions. So I want to say true or false, and then one, two, three, four, and then free response, and then start at five. Okay? Um, there are a lot of solutions to this. Okay, LaTeX is really good at stuff like this. The easiest and I think most accessible um, way to do it is the enum item package. Okay? It does exactly that. Okay? You can see I have two enumerate environments and the only thing I need to add other than the use package command is this little resume here and then it does exactly what you want it to do and it looks like that. Okay? Um, true or false, one, two, fill in the blank, three, four. Okay? Exactly right. Um, one other thing that should be mentioned about the enum item package uh, it has many other really good features to deal with the enumerate environment. One of those is to change the, the format of the label. Now, this is worth mentioning because if you do a Google search for how do I change the label in the, enumer in the enumerate environment, what you're going to get most likely is the enumerate package, which does that, and it does it with an easier syntax. But the enumerate package is not as fully featured, and they conflict. So that's a problem. Next question. All right. So uh, I have a whole bunch of documents. They all have the same format. Okay. I would like to tweak that format, okay, but I don't want to make a change in every one of my documents. So I have all these documents. They all have the same exact preamble, or almost the same exact preamble. I would like to change them all in the same way without changing all the documents. All right. So when does this come up for teachers? Well, it comes up all the time. And this is a this is a LaTeX rite of passage, right? I mean, you have your you have your preamble, and okay, now I want to change one thing in the footer, so I bite the bullet and I change it 23 times. And, okay, so after enough iterations of that, you find yourself crying in my office asking how to fix it, and and then and then you learn how to do it. Now, I should mention this isn't really a LaTeX problem. This is a programming problem. It's it's it comes up all the time. You know, I'm I'm writing code today, and I've got to think in my head. 80 man hours from now, how will I want this to be? And, and this is a challenge of programming that, that is not specific to LaTeX. So um, as you all know, LaTeX has, is really good at handling this um, problem as well. Okay? This is very easy for LaTeX. However, for the student who has a whole bunch of identical preambles, what I do is what I call a common preamble. Okay? So I just tell them to take that preamble, copy it, put it in a different um, file, and then um, and then input it. Now, a package is better than that, but remember, this is this person's third day of LaTeX. I don't want to make them write, learn how to write packages. Okay? Um, so, pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to look a little bit at, at how we might do that. All right? So, this is my sample preamble, um, and you can see it has all the preamble-y things. It has all the packages I need, and it has headers and footers and, and so on. And there's only one thing that, that is um, of note, which is that I, I don't want them all to be identical, just near identical. So the, l the left header is going to contain something unique to each document, and we're going to make that change um, on a document by document basis. Um, I'm going to have a sample homework and a sample exam that we're going to use uh, a few times. Um, all right, so in the sample homework, you can see the preamble, and then the next line changes the left header to reflect that it's a homework. The exam does the exact same thing. It just repeats that 
L head command. So take a look at those real quick. Okay, now you can see the exam and the homework are formatted almost identically as you would have expected. Okay. Another use for the input command related idea here is the idea of using modular documents, which I, I don't have to explain the virtues of that to any of you, but, but it, it comes in handy when you're writing lecture notes or, or, or a textbook, okay, which um, I have done for my calculus class. And let's see if I can find it. If that's something you're interested in, you can find it in the same place under teaching and lecture notes. And okay, so um, it's very long, it's about 400 pages. And as you can imagine, it's nice to be able to work on one little section at a time. Having, it, having each of these sections in its own file and calling those with the input command makes that very easy. Okay? It's, it's, it's much better. Next problem. I have one document that contains some content that I want to show sometimes, but hide other times. Why might I want to do that as a teacher? The answer is quiz, exam, homework, keys. So I make homework1.tech, I give it to my students, they turn it in, then they want a key. Okay? The natural thing to do is make homework1 underscore key.tech, copy and paste and go from there. Now, this is bad because as any good programmer knows, having the same identical content in two places is bad. Okay, later, if you want to change homework one, you have to go to two different places to do that, and that's not great. All right? So um, I should say first that probably the, the best way to do this is, I mean, when you hear optional, you think, I want a package with an option, and, and that might be, might be the best way to do it. But again, I don't want this person to have to write packages. So what I do is, is a custom command, all right? So in the body of my, my homework assignment. Now, before I go on, I have two solutions to this, and the two solutions are based on white space. So first, we're, we're going to um, look at a homework assignment. Now, the feature of this homework assignment is that when I give it to the students, it should just be one, two, three, with no space in between it. And then when I want a key, I just put the answers in those spaces, in, in between those, those items, okay? So, in the body, I have a question, and then I have slash answer, and the argument is the answer. Now, at that point, it's just a matter of going to your preamble and defining answer to do the thing that you want it to do. If you want to make your homework assignment, you just tell the answer command to print nothing. If you want a key, you tell it to read the input and format it however you want. Okay. See an example, but you can imagine how this works. Okay, so depending on whether you want an assignment or a key, you just comment out the right thing. Now. In an exam, okay, you have question, space for the answer, question, space for the answer, new page, question, etc. Okay. In the key, you want to remove that white space and replace it with the answer. And the way that I tell people to do that is this slash KC command, which stands for key control. And, and um, so I have a question, what is the capital of Oregon? And KC has two arguments. The first is the white space, the second is the answer. It's that simple. And then it's just a matter of telling KC to display either the first argument or the second argument. All right, so let's take a quick look. Okay, so this is a homework, and you can see the answer command def defined to ignore the input. And we already saw this once. Okay, when you when you um, look at it, you get a homework assignment with no answers in there. All right, so just by commenting that out and uncommenting the right thing and recompiling, hopefully I can get the answers. Okay, so there you go. Okay, the answer's just, just that one comment and uncomment puts the answers. With the exam, you can see right now I have the slash KC um, command displaying the first argument, which is supposed to contain white space. And then when you look at this way, you get a regular looking exam okay, that has two pages and space for answers. Okay. When I change that one to a two, I get, let's see what I get.
Okay, it looks the same, all right? The white space has been replaced with the, with the answers, okay? which is the expected behavior, okay? Now, the only thing that, that I didn't really mention is, is that clear page commands, okay, if you have white space, you need to force page breaks, obviously, and, and those have to be wrapped in the KC command as well. As you can tell, my, my pre-calculus classes are quite hard. Um, okay, so what's next? Um, a similar trick a, uh, a similar trick can be used to, to create different versions of an exam, and I don't know how many of us are teachers or how many of us have encountered this idea, but uh, if, if you teach pre-calculus, your students are going to cheat. There's no way around that. So you like to make two different versions of the same exam, which are basically identical except for the numbers are changed slightly, and, and a similar trick can, can, can do that. All right. So um, my question is, what is the capital of? And in version one, you get Ohio, and in version two, you get Oregon. All right. Um, all right, so next problem. How can I put the graph of a function in my LaTeX document? Now remember, I'm a math teacher, so, so this is a problem for me, probably not a problem for your average philosophy or, or dance teacher, but, but this is a problem for me. And, and um, Okay, why is it a problem? Well, I, I don't need a good reason, okay? So, um, <laughs> however, I mean, this is a symptom of, of, a, larger, of a larger illness, which is, I, I've proofread I've proofread exams and and inevitably you get someone who you know question number four okay question number four is only text and it says um, something like a right triangle has legs of length one and four how long is the hypotenuse round your answer to two decimal places okay um, sounds innocuous but that is really an awful question because Geometry is about the visualization. I don't care that they know what the word leg and hypotenuse means. I care that they know how to find the missing side in a triangle. So that question needs a diagram. If you don't have a diagram, you're doing it wrong. Okay? Um, I, more to the point, I, I, we have a lot of international students that, I mean, they're not going to know what the word hypotenuse is, and I don't care about that. I want them to be able to do the math. So the point here is that you, you need to be able to know the LaTeX that allows you to ask the questions you want to ask instead of being forced to ask questions in a certain way so that you can, uh, uh, because of the LaTeX that you know, okay? So um, that's the issue here. For graphing functions, um, there's an obvious solution, which is to use the include graphics command, okay? Uh, you know, we're up to the deadline and someone comes and says, I want to put a function in my quiz. How do I do that? And I say, well, how do you uh, already know how to graph a function, and they say, well, on my calculator, and I smack them in the back of the head, and they say, okay, well, I guess Excel, all right, <laughs> whatever. Um, so I say, you know, go to Excel, make your graph, export it, and, and do it this way, right? In the long term, though, I, I don't like doing it that way for several reasons. You can debate those choices on your own, but for me, if nothing else, it's nice to have all the code in one place. I, I don't like to have to carry around that original Excel file every time I want to change my function. So anyway, if this is good enough for you, then you can stop here, but um, I have other solutions. Now, putting a function in a document sort of depends on what you want your function to do. So I have a research solution and I have a teaching solution, and I'll explain the difference. Okay, so for research solutions, there, there's a whole bunch of them. We've seen several today. Okay, there's, there's, this is an example using PGF plot, the PGF plots package. Um, we, we talked about R today, okay? There's ways to use Sage, lots of choices, okay? Um, all of these choices have two things in common. One, they're, they're sort of designed to make nice graphs of things. Also, arguably, they're designed to be powerful computing software, okay? Maybe not with PGF plots, but, but more so than other native tech options. Anyway, um, this is great for research, okay? It has a nice, it has a nice five line, that's good, all right? So, um, however, for teaching, I just use the regular ticks package and the, the, the plot feature, okay? Um, why does there need to be a difference? Well, the answer is, as a teacher, I don't want that action-packed, nice syntax. What I really want is visual control. I need to be able to, to um, uh, decorate things, okay? I also, I, I, I'm willing to trade the, the computing power, okay? There's no function I've ever needed that where a Taylor expansion wouldn't just suffice, okay? So, I mean, I can work it out uh, no matter what, all right? So, um, before I, I give some examples of that, 
Okay, you, we'll see some examples in a minute. I'll just show how, how I graph functions as a teacher. Okay, and it looks like this. Okay, you, the, the key here is this draw plot command. Okay, what it does is it, it graphs something parametric with parameter slash x. Um, from 0 to 4, you can change the samples. This is a very basic example. There's a lot more you can do than this. The grid has just been added for convenience. Okay, now, the first thing you might notice is that this is actually less code than the last example. This is four lines, and the last example was, was five lines. Okay? Um, but you'll also notice that this is prettier. right? It has, it has labels, it has axes, it has all the things that you might want out of a graph. Here, the, the draw plot command only gives me the line. I've got to do everything else on my own here. Okay? Um, so why would we want that? Well, we're, we're going to go through a few frames here in which I, I've given examples of graphs that I've actually used <coughs> in my classes that were reasonable to do in ticks, but not so easy to do with, with other choices. And, and the, commonalities, the commonalities you'll notice is all of the decoration. Okay? It's getting all of the things in red that is a problem. Okay? Um, being able to zoom in, this is the spy package if you've used that before. Um, all these decorations that I want to add, this is difficult uh, if not for, for ticks on its own. Okay, so um, this is my uh, graphing solution a as a teacher. And I will say that uh, there's been some talk about ticks in the last two days, uh, and it's always something like, hey, I bet you could do that in ticks. And then someone under their breath mumbles that, yes, I could, but I have plans for the next 30 hours, so I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> All right, so, so that's a fair criticism. Okay, ticks can do a lot of things, it's not always easy or intuitive. There's also a lot of different ways to do the same thing. I will say that as a teacher, uh, Tix and I have a, a you know, five-year committed relationship. I've, I've not needed anything else. Okay? As a teacher, um, this is all I've ever used. And I have this 400-page textbook that's just full of images. Let's see. Um, and I mean, that's triangles. There's lots of functions, all sorts of fun and exciting things, and all I've ever needed is, is text for any of these images. So um, in research, you need other choices for teaching. This does the job. Um, OK, uh, the last thing I want to talk about is getting my freshman pre-calculus students to try LaTeX. All right, the first thing that comes to mind is why? Why, why, why would you do that to yourself? Why, why am I going to cause myself all that pain? And, and um, to answer that question, I'm going to say that at the University of Oregon, uh, we, we don't have a lot of STEM fields, okay, uh, for undergraduates at least. Okay? We don't have a lot of that. Okay? So that makes it seem like even worse of an idea. But, but the thing is, okay, so that's me, sorry. Um, so um, I mean, the median number of math majors we have in our classes in, in our classes is zero in, in a pre-calculus class. It's not even close, actually. Um, mm -hmm. I have never had a math major. I don't know anyone who's ever had a math major. The, the closest we have to that is econ and business, and I can't believe I said that with a straight face. So, so um, <laughs> why am I trying to get these people to use LaTeX? And the answer is, um, if I can't teach them math, if they're not going to teach, if they're not going to care about the math, I'm going to try to teach them some life skills. And, and, and LaTeX gives them sort of two life skills. One is the ability to create visually pleasing documents. I mean, in any career, I think you get to a point eventually where the best word can do just isn't good enough. Okay? I mean, I think that happens pretty much no matter what you decide to do. Okay? So um, if, at the very least, they learn that there are other choices, then I'm satisfied. Okay? The second reason is that Learning how to learn to do something on your own is a skill. Okay? Learning how to learn a skill is in itself a skill. If I can say, here's five minutes of an introduction to LaTeX, go home and learn how to do it. And they can go home and do that. They've just taught themselves something, and I think that's valuable. So that is, I don't know, why I try to get my freshmen to at least try LaTeX. Right, so why is it a problem? The problem is that they don't want to do it. Okay? They just won't. Okay? So they're very resistant. I, I, I don't think, I've been thinking about this all week, and I, we can debate the laziness of freshmen on our own time, but, but it's not that they're afraid of change. Okay? You give them a, a new phone or a new fashion or a new music, and they'll love it. It's, it's something deeper than that. And, 
Anyway, the problem here is getting them to actually do it, right? So um, the solution I've come up with is something web-based, and it's rightlatetech.com. There's, there's several different choices out there. Okay? Right Late Tech is my favorite for two reasons. First of all, installing LaTeX on your local machine is unpleasant. Okay? It's really it's, it's easy compared to five, ten years ago, or whatever. Okay? Um, I myself have tried and failed several times. Pile it, they send it back, that's that. They have no choice other than to time out somewhere. Okay, if there's an infinite loop, it's a problem. Okay, so I will say that the reason they suck is, um, well, they're really short. I, I was not able to, uh, this document timed out. I couldn't do it. Okay, this was too much. Okay. Um, some other things, the front end is pretty, but it's not fully featured. Okay. Uh, it, one of its celebrated features is collaboration, and it's okay for that, but um, version controls are, are, are way better. Okay, they're just, they're just better. Uh, if that's something you're comfortable with. Now, I think the people in this room are more likely to be comfortable with version control than, than my freshmen, so and that's the difference. But um, there's, Right Tech has a, a, a free version. Okay, the free version is, is nice, but it also has, what was it that ATN said, a recommended upgrade or, or something like that. <laughs> and, and the paid version, unfortunately, is, is actually worth the money, which is unfortunate because when you're using the free, free version, you feel like you're missing out, and I don't want to have to pay for LaTeX. So, um, so that's that. Uh, okay, so I mean, I can go on for the, you just it just can't replace it, your 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 tech editor. Um, there are two places though where I find it very valuable. Um, one is sometimes in a pinch I have to write something on my phone or really any platform that doesn't that that can't install LaTeX. If I, it's, it's unpleasant to do it on my phone, but I can if I have to. Um, or if you're on a computer that maybe doesn't have LaTeX, or maybe uh, you're trying to troubleshoot LaTeX or something like that, you, you have a cloud option. Here. Okay, so um, that's really all I have to say, um, except that it's, it's been very nice to be here, and it's been a sincere pleasure to meet, meet all of you. So, <laughs> so that's that. Thanks for the really enjoyable talk, Dan. Um, I agree with everything you said, so I'm glad that I'm on the right track. <laughs> when you um, use the right latex on your phone, so can you then download it to your own computer? Yes, it, it saves to a cloud, and then um, and then you can access you know your account from anywhere that you like.